Welcome to the second part of my QNAP setup videos. Today, I want to talk about how to set up users, how to set up groups, and how to install those great, great applications. Now, it is worth touching on very early on that if you haven't caught part one and you've just bought a QNAP NAS, I strongly advise that you hip hop, um, hip hop over to part one to learn about RAID, IPs, shared folders, and mapped network drives. But otherwise, today I want to show you how you and your users interact with the device, how you sort out privileges, rights, and storage quotas, and probably the most important of all, how exactly you get all of these great applications onto your QNAP NAS. So let's go. Okay, so we're back on the desktop here and the user interface of QTS to show you guys how to add users, add groups, and add applications to your NAS. So in order to add users, it's worth bearing in mind that firstly, you've already created one user, namely the admin login. And this is an administrative account that lets you control everything. But maybe you've got other people on your tech team. Maybe you want to give management and staff or family members access to this NAS and with each user have their own privileges, rights, and storage space. In order to do that, we need to head over to the control panel. From the control panel, we need to go here to the second area called privilege. Now we've already talked about shared folders, but today we want to talk about users and user groups. Now the difference is, users are individual logins. User groups is when you can batch everyone together and then create big rule sets of access and privilege and space that apply to individual users. It's far easier to increase or decrease privileges on groups of users rather than having to go through them all one by one. Now, if we want to create an individual user, we click on that user button. There's our admin account we created earlier, and now we want to create a brand new one. So first we click create, and then either create a single or multiple users, or we can import an existing CSV file if you already have information for all of your staff or family members that you want to import into the NAS. For now, let's go for creating a user. From here, we can add a photo of that user if we like, and let's give one. Of, let's see if we've got any photos on this NAS that we can utilize for this video. Let's have a quick look. Have we got anything in the downloads folder? Maybe we've got some photos of some of that stuff from earlier. And on one of my previous videos, there's some photos of different people. So how about we use this picture of a person with a cat? The name of this person, we're going to call them Adam. Alphabetically, way easier. And then give them the basic password, the word password. We can verify that password to make sure it works. And we can obviously do the usual stuff there. And we can add more information about them along with an email address so that these people can be notified about their login credentials and set up notifications within their account. Now, at the moment, we've not created any other group, so it's just in the everyone sense, and we can edit their permissions from here with regards to folders that they can access. So for now, we'll let them access the shared folder we created in the previous video, and we'll let them have read and write access. So read only or RO means they can see the files, but do nothing else. And RW means read write, which means they can fully interact, add and delete files if they so choose. For now, we're going to deny them access to every other folder except for that one. Actually, the given public. From there, we can scroll down and talk about their privileges. And the privileges is what apps we give them access to. So for now, we're only going to give them access to file management. We're not letting them access anything else in the back end of this NAS. And there you go. From here, we can click create, and we've now created another user called Adam who only has file level access, no access to any other apps. Now, just to show you just how straightforward it is, if we log out of this NAS, we can now log in as if we were Adam. So if we use Adam's credentials that we've just created, click login, and once again, we'll log into the NAS just like we did before, but this time we, it will treat us firstly as a completely different new user. So now it's just asking us about our data privacy rules. And once we get onto the user interface, we will see some changes. For a start, all of those apps are now gone. All we can see is 
file management. If there's a slight delay there, I apologize. It's nothing to do with the NAS. It's my GPU being utilized by the screen recording software. But as you can see straight away, this person has no access to the app management, just like we wanted them to. They've got their own account and they've got their own screen picture and everything. But there's still no denying that this person only has the level of access we give them. If we go into the file management, all they can access are the folders we let them have access to. And it's from here that we can give people far more tailored access and controllable access if we so choose. For now, let's make our way back into the administrative role to give ourselves that full access. Now, if you have got lots and lots of staff or lots of family members and far off family members um, all in their own little groups, herds, houses and whatever, this is where groups will come into play. And from user groups, we can then assign people one by one to different groups. So at the moment, we've got admin groups and everyone. Let's create another group here. Now we'll call this group staff or staff A. Staff A, we can then assign users. And of course, we've only created these users here. But if we assign Adam as a staff member, and then from there, talk about the permissions of this user group. Now, it's worth mentioning that if the group has more access than the individual member, you can end up giving this person more access by moving them into this group. Any folder that's clicked deny on both the user and the group they won't have access. But if they're moved to a group where they've got access, they will have temporary access. And it will be helpful to do that for people who you chop and change, moving around the company, department to department, but just want to control the files they see whilst they're in that position. From here, we click Create. And now we are going to create this group. Oh no, we have to give it a better name than that, apparently. Staff A, click Create. And now we've created this new user group. It is worth mentioning that all the user groups can be modified at any time from this panel. So if you decide that the users in that group should have more space, or those users should have access to brand new um, directories of files, you can do that from here. And as long as you do it within the group, it will affect every one of the users in that group. So. We've created shared folders, we've created a raid pool, and we've created users to access the files. What good is all of this by QNAP if you're just gonna use it as a basic form of storage? This is where apps make things a lot more interesting. Like a lot of NAS brands, lots of applications can be installed within the NAS, just like you install them on your smartphone, PC, Mac, or whatever system. QNAP has loads of first party applications as well has lots of third party applications. These let you do everything from um, playing with files in a far more tailored fashion, such as Photo Station does for photos, Music Station does for music and more, or you can install far more bespoke business applications for backup and more. In order to install an application, it really is straightforward. You just go to the App Center icon available on the desktop interface there, and it will open up the available apps in the App Store. Again, I can't stress this enough. This is both easy and almost all of these applications are free. There's beta apps and partner websites where there's custom apps being made all the time. Let's install an app now. Let's go for Photo Station. Now, some apps, when you install them for the first time, will require you to add on other little apps. Some apps require settings to be changed in the settings menu, and other applications require things like Java to be enabled and more. If these things are required, the NAS will tell you in advance. But for the most part, most apps can be installed very easily and within three clicks. Right now, it's enabling the Media Center option in the background of the NAS. Once that's done, it's going to install Photo Station. Let's skip forward a bit. And now Photo Station is installing. This will happen in the background and you can continue using the NAS as much as you want. As you can see, the media streaming add-on is being installed as well. This allows media to be easily distributed over DLNA as well as increasing the number of file formats and codecs that can be utilized by the QNAP NAS. 
While this is happening, we can choose to install a bunch of other applications if we choose. And once again, I do recommend that you install the QNAP apps, as in most cases, they will always be the best application to run day-to-day uh, -day applications. As you can see, PhotoStation is now complete. We can click here to open up the app from the app center, and then it will open the app just like it any other app would. Alternatively, let's remove that and close that down. Alternatively, the app, once you've downloaded it, will appear here on the desktop as well as up here. If we like, do remember that the wallpaper background on this NAS can be changed at any time if we so choose. And that means that we can create a far more bespoke user interface. If we right click, oh no, not right click, my mistake, we go to the control panel, we can change the background picture on this NAS. We can change pretty much everything about this NAS if we so choose, and of course, make the NAS a far more bespoke and unique user environment for you. In the next video, we're gonna talk about streaming different kinds of media on this NAS. We're gonna talk about photos, music, and video, as well as the best ways to enjoy it on your devices. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna wrap things up here. If you did enjoy this, click like and subscribe, and I do recommend you subscribe, because every single day, I'm telling you guys about the best ways to make the most of your NAS, and new tips and tri tricks do come out all the time. So it's great to keep you guys in the loop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.